morning. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Friday. It's trading the 25th of November 2016. Be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs and visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can certainly download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now let's try and look at the uh, economic data out overnight, look at the numbers. Uh, the Asian market's f fairly uh, positive. You had the uh, Nikkei up 0.26%, the Shanghai up 0.6%, the Hang Seng up 0.5%. So the, um, the actual uh, rally continues to a large extent. Now, the US markets, as we know, are off due to Thanksgiving yesterday. Certainly should be uh, back online today, although I think it's a, it's a short session. So it'll be interesting to see how the markets trade and react. Now, in terms of economic data overnight, really from uh, overnight, we did have uh, CPI data in Japan, nothing really major. I mean, you've had the uh, USDJPY stuck at 113 now. I think this is a very important chart for everyone, given the fact that the US dollar rally has led, uh, has certainly accompanied a S&P 500 rally. Therefore, one would presume that a, um, and obviously we know that USDJPY is a major counterpart. Okay, so when the USDJPY comes to a potential top, then you are looking for the equity markets to come to a potential top too. Okay, now the weekly chart, from my perspective, certainly seems to be exhausted. Uh, the daily chart, you clearly see we are into resistance now. I mean, it's been one hell of a rally, an impressive rally. So you are seeing resistance around this region of 113.7 and 114. We did get to 113.92, the highest. So you are looking for a potential reversal. Uh, the four-hour chart as well, you can see we're certainly looking very overstretched here. RSI certainly oversold, overbought, should I say, to a large extent, and therefore looking for a reversal. Going to the 60-minute chart, you can clearly see here we've stopped making higher highs and higher lows, and that certainly is an early warning signal, okay, looking for a clear bias change, okay. So you've certainly broken out this rising uh, bullish channel, and now we're looking to reverse Clearly a HS formation type uh, pattern brewing here. So your left shoulder here, looking for your head, and then obviously looking for this right shoulder now, and then looking to reverse. So USDJPY certainly looking top heavy and therefore looking for a reversal in risk sentiment. Let's bring up the uh, chart of the US dollar as well whilst we're here. Okay, so US dollar futures as well in the daily chart, certainly looking uh, exhausted. 60 minute chart, potential double top here on the uh, US dollar and therefore looking for a reversal on the dollar and therefore looking for reversal in equity markets too. Okay, so remember the dollar index has been inflating on this uh, reflation trade, okay, based, led by uh, the uh, the actual uh, Dow Transportation Index to a large extent, okay, led by copper. Now copper is an interesting chart as well, folks. If you bring up copper chart here, I'll show you on the daily chart, you can clearly see that we are topping out. You've got a... Uh, uh, hanging man style topping tail okay uh, you've got a doji candle and you fa fa basically failed to take out the previous high so you are looking at a double top too so a uh, bearish shooting star pattern call it what you want from a technical perspective my understanding is it's a topping tail bulls certainly tried to push higher were rejected very very quickly and certainly were pushed back okay so certainly looking for a copper market potential top here folks okay Certainly looking for risk aversion, okay? And this uh, this sell-off here certainly had massive volume, as you can see here. So volume certainly speaks um, volume, <laughs> okay? So volume speaks volume, and you can clearly see this topping tail here, massive volume, okay? A spike in volume on the sell side, and therefore confirming the, uh, the potential pivot top in copper. A potential pivot top in copper, as we know, if you actually chart the Dow transportation chart versus the, cop the copper chart, you can see that the Dow and the copper are mo moving in tandem. And therefore, when a copper chart starts to top out, you know exactly what's coming next, folks. Okay, uh, I don't think I need to explain it to you, do I? Okay, the market certainly is going to head south and very, very fast as well. Okay, so I'm certainly going out on a limb here, and I'm saying that this equity market top is in. Okay, that's basically my uh, understanding. That's my analysis, looking for a major reversal. Okay, this light volume flow up stupidity really is not a trading strategy. It really is amateur, from my understanding, it's amateur price action. It's basically an easy get out of jail card just by the by the market and the market will move higher. That's not a trading strategy and I don't like to adopt that. Okay, uh, when we compete in sports, we must compete fairly. Okay, so uh, basically no PEDs when we're boxing, when, when it, whether it's UFC, 
we must compete on, on an even playing field a level playing field okay and that's not a strategy that i'd adopt as a trader okay because it's not something that would work in the long run and nor is it something that i'd like to teach either okay so again looking for a potential copper top here folks okay looking for a reversal uh, so very very important uh, in terms of oil as well certainly oil uh, remains weak from my understanding okay um, again um, nothing really has been confirmed nothing is concrete uh, from in terms of OPEC and uh, them agreeing and there's three potential different scenarios which I covered yesterday and it, you can find it on the Wall Street Journal's website as well three potential scenarios one of the scenarios I can't see happening at all with the, the Saudis taking the greatest burden of cutting production that's impossible we've already had a tweet this morning with saudis ramping up production so for 2017 so i can't see that occurring at all then you have the other potential uh, scenario of the russians coming on board and cutting that certainly isn't i mean even them got, i need to cut quite substantially to make any any effect on the price of oil and then you have the um, iraqis and the iranians and they're never going to agree and you already have the uh, the nigerians uh, uh, already complaining about loss of output and uh, therefore they need to catch up so again there's too many uh, potential outcomes and scenarios etc etc and it just makes it's very very hard uh, from my understanding uh, for oil prices to really sustain and move higher i think the actual move itself really has been factored in with this uh, pivot high of 48.5 are we going to move any higher and will that really make an impact on uh, on uh, equities themselves given the fact that uh, equities have already rallied on stronger metals again it seems very unlikely from my understanding okay so therefore i'm going to be entrenched in my bearish bias and i'm certainly looking for a potential move lower again this is my opinion folks okay my opinion is my opinion and it's very subjective and i'm just putting forth my putting forth my argument if you think this argument is strong then you're more than willing to embrace it and, and, and certainly take it on board. If not, then you must have your own opinion and you're more than welcome to go with that, okay? And that's what trading is. It's a subjective science, fundamentals, technicals is from subjective as well. And uh, intermarket analysis really helps me uh, basically take the noise out of trading, okay, to a large extent. It acts like a filter. So from my understanding, I'm applying intermarket analysis. I can certainly see the copper chart topping out and therefore looking for a reversal. The Shanghai index as well coming into resistance. Previous support equals resistance on the Shanghai index too. And therefore, I'm looking for a reversal there as well. So I'm applying the copper chart being into resistance. I'm applying the Shanghai being into resistance. And I'm looking for a potential move uh, lower. Okay, folks. Now, bringing up the um, the other for, uh, fundamental uh, arguments this morning, you had uh, economic data from Italy, industrial sales and retail sales both coming in weaker. OK, we have political concerns in, in Italy and France. And we also have the ECB certainly uh, highlighting the potential uh, political risks that the market certainly hadn't factored in. So, again, you're looking for risk aversion from central banks. You're looking for and also not only that, you had Mr. Weedman and Mr. Consasio basically uh, re reiterating that there will be no additional stimulus in December and already prepping the markets for a delay to January to February. And certainly delaying the additional stimulus, given the fact that euro is currently at 1.05. We did actually see a spike above 1.06, which obviously was bearish, given the fact that a, a stronger euro hurts equities. Okay, German GDP data yesterday was certainly weaker. IFO data certainly weaker as well, and that certainly doesn't bode well. Now we had, uh, we've had today, we've had the uh, UK GDP data coming in line, but the exports and imports were on the weaker side. Okay. So that isn't good news either. OK, also disposable income was on the weaker side, therefore looking for risk off or risk aversion. OK, so certainly weaker from my understanding and my perspective. OK, and like I said, copper really does is the uh, is it does uh, give you the correct potential move that's coming next. OK, now let's bring up the technical charts and the technical chart speaks for themselves as well. Now, if you look at the German DAX and that's really the only chart that I need to focus on is the H&S formation. We've certainly held the right shoulder at Fib 61%. We've certainly put in a bearish engulfing candle. And now we're looking to reverse it even further. So you are looking for a potential move lower. And given the fact that you have a H&S top, no higher highs, it's very hard for anyone to uh, argue for a bullish move. If, if we were making higher highs and higher lows, then I can understand. But that isn't the case, folks. That is not the case at present. OK, you are not making higher highs and higher lows. If anything, you're well, not if anything, you are making uh, lower lows. Uh, well, not lower lows, but making lower highs. OK, so again, looking for further pressure on the downside. Now, the only fact the only variable that's keeping the European markets afloat is the constant move higher on US equities. And once that comes to an end, game over. OK, looking for a move lower. 
right so certainly looking for risk aversion risk off move here looking for a move lower on the german dax now the german dax weakness is certainly confirmed by the mdax 50 so you as you can see here looking to potentially retest that resistance low zone we are making lower lows and lower highs and now we're looking to potentially close the gap below so german dax looking to get a flush here okay Let's look at the tech all share, tech all share as well. Looking at the daily chart, you clearly see that we're into resistance. So that indicates to you that the NASDAQ is into resistance and therefore you're looking to move lower. Okay. So my understanding, German indices all indicating a move south. Okay. Let's bring up the volatility index for the French CAC. You clearly see that we're making a base. We're putting a bottoming tail. Now we're looking to potentially move higher on the French CAC given political uncertainty going forward. Bringing up the, uh, the French CAC actual uh, equity indices. You can see that we've rejected the 4550 level. We we're currently heading south, looking to move lower. And you can clearly see that we have a HS formation on the 60 minute chart. So, again, lower highs, looking for lower lows. Okay, looking for a move south. Looking at the FTSE 100 now. Okay, so certainly topping out here around the uh, 6834 level. Okay, looking for a move lower down to the 6810 level. Okay, looking for risk aversion here. 60 minute chart you obviously held 200 ma that's 6838 and now looking for a move lower the fib 50 to 61 percent resistance has held and therefore looking for risk aversion looking for a move lower daily chart on the FTSE 100 you can clearly see we're putting a topping tail on that budget concern given the fact that market started to move higher and inflate higher and obviously uh, this potential uh, euphoria over a uh, positive or bullish fiscal uh, stimulus led bu budget and that wasn't the case if anything they're more indebted and they're more vulnerable okay uh, and again, the, uh, the Mr. Hammond failed to live up to expectations, and the FTSE certainly was punished accordingly. Okay, so again, looking for a top in copper, top in oil potentially, top in U.S. markets, top in German DAX. Everything is indicating a move lower, given the political uncertainty. ECB highlighting that as well, and the lack of QE in December. So everything is indicating the south for me. Okay, very very hard to argue otherwise. Weekly chart, the FTSE 100, you have a HNS formation. Right shoulder certainly is in. Now looking to flush low. Okay. Let's move on to the Euro stocks. Euro stocks certainly will be the same theme, same story. Okay. 60 minute chart, HNS formation. Now looking to move south. Okay. So again, lower high, looking for a lower low. Okay, folks, I think that's sufficient for now in terms of uh, the uh, analysis and insight. Be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs and take advantage of the bonus and certainly visit TradeSigma and uh, download the app. Goodbye now.